So now let us uh, understand the process of placenta formation. That is placentation. Placenta is a mechanical and physiological connection between the fetus and the maternal tissue. So it is mechanical. Mechanical means a physical structure and physiological. That is functional also it helps in many ways as a connection between the fetus and the mother. So it is a mechanical and physiological connection between the fetus and maternal tissue. This placenta which is formed is of two origins we can say one which is coming from the maternal tissue that is the maternal part of the placenta and one part is formed by the fetus which is fetal placenta. So when we talk of the complete placenta there are two parts the maternal and fetal. The maternal part is known as decidua and the fetal part is made up of only chorion. In human beings only chorion helps in formation of placenta. We will talk about the extra embryonic membrane after we are done with this uh, process of placentation. Now how exactly this uh, formation takes place? Suppose this is the endometrial lining. In this endometrial lining a tissue is formed a disc like tissue which is the placenta and between the placenta and the fetus there is a connection which is known as umbilical cord and attached to the umbilical cord is the fetus. So this structure is the placenta and this cord is umbilical cord. So how is this connection formed? From the fetus like if this is the fetal body, chorionic villi are given or like they arise, these chorionic villi are formed, these chorionic villi they penetrate the endometrium of the uterus. So this is the endometrial lining or endometrium. So this green part here it is the fetal part and only chorion participate in placenta formation. So fetal placenta comprises of these chorionic villi and endometrium. Now in this endometrium here is all connective tissue and the blood vessels of the endometrium. These chorionic villi they penetrate into this connective tissue and ultimately they even penetrate these blood vessels. That means they are actually dipped in the maternal blood and from the maternal blood they are taking the nourishment for the fetus. Now this endometrium and the fetus now if they stretch or this structure they separate then a cord develops in between. So this complete part which is in the endometrial lining becomes the maternal placenta and the chorion part becomes the fetal placenta and the structure which is formed by stretching in between this that is the umbilical cord. So now the fetus is taking nourishment from the maternal blood directly. Before we take up the functions of placenta let us talk about some types of a placenta. First is on the basis of 
which membrane gives rise to placenta? So, which extra embryonic membrane is participating in formation of this placenta? One is called yolk sac placenta. Second is called allantois or allantoic placenta and third is known as chorionic placenta. So, there are three types. Yolk sac placenta is formed by the membrane of yolk sac and chorion. Allantoic placenta is formed by allantois and chorion. And chorionic placenta is formed by only chorion. So, depending upon which extra embryonic membrane is helping in formation of the placenta, we can give it a name yolk sac placenta, allantoic placenta, or chorionic placenta. The second classification is on the basis of how much attachment is there between the mother's tissue and the fetal tissue. For this, we need to understand that if this is the blood vessel of the fetus, blood vessel of fetus. The membrane which lines the capillary because it is in the uh, endo, sorry, in the fetus, this is a capillary lined by a simple squamous epithelium which is known as endothelium or endothesium. Then the connective tissue here and the trophoderm. Then if we come to the maternal part, this is the epithelium of the endometrium, let us label all these layers, epithelium of endometrium, then connective tissue, so this is connective tissue of endometrium and here is again the blood vessel of the endometrium. So, this is the endothesium or endothelium. These layers are given numbers. This membrane is number 1. So, how many layers are separating? The blood of fetus and the blood of mother. How many layers are there in between? The connective tissue is the second layer. Let us write this is trophoderm. So, this trophoderm makes the third layer. Then epithelium of the endometrial lining makes the fourth layer. Connective tissue 5 and this 6. So, how many layers are separating the fetal blood from the maternal blood? This is one way of classifying placenta. So, this is on the basis of layers separating on the basis of layers separating blood of fetus and mother. In this case, there are six layers or six membranes which are separating. One is the endothelium of the blood vessel of the fetus, the connective tissue, trophoderm, then epithelium of the endometrium, connective tissue and blood vessel of or the membrane of blood vessel of the endometrium. So, if six layers separate them, then such type of placenta is known as epi epitheliochorial. What is meant by epitheliochorial type? When six membranes are present. Six membranes are present. 
if one membrane is because it is chorionic villi which are going into the endometrial lining. So, when chorionic villi go in first membrane which they will damage is the epithelium of the endometrium. So, if in the second case five membranes separate which are these five suppose this get degenerated or this is destroyed. So, separation is 1, 2, 3, 5 and 6 there are 5 layers which are separating. So, if there are 5 layers this is known as syndesmochorial. It is called syndesmochorial. How many layers are there? 5. 1, 2, 3, 5 and 6 which has been destroyed? Fourth has been destroyed or it is digested. Fourth digested. Next type if this connective tissue is also digested then how many layers are separating? 1, 2, 3 and 6, 4. So, if 4 layers separate then it is known as endothelio Coreal. The first one was epitheliochorial, syndesmochorial, and then endotheliochorial. In endotheliochorial, there are four layers which are separating. So, which layers have been degenerated? The fourth and the fifth. So, fourth and fifth digested. If this endothelium of the maternal tissue is also digested. That means this is also gone. So, now this tissue is in direct connection with the blood. This is what is happening in this diagram. The chorion is actually dipping inside the blood. Only difference is if we make this in the form of a finger like structure. Where has it gone? It first digested the epithelium. First there were 6 layers, then it digested epithelium, then it digested connective tissue. Now it has digested the endothelium of the blood vessel also. This is fourth type. How many membranes or layers separating? 1, 2, 3 and it is directly in the blood. This is known as hemochorial. Hemochorial, there are three layers which separate the blood. How many membranes digested? 4, 5 and 6 digested. 4th, fourth, 5th fourth, and 6th digested. If there are only three, okay, write down one example also. This is seen in humans. So, the human placenta is hemochorial. So, uh, three layers only separating. Suppose the third layer that is trophoectoderm or trophoderm is also lost. Then it is known as hemoendothelial. So, now the classification is based on how many layers are separating. In case of human beings, only the fetal tissue is as it is. From the maternal tissue, every layer has been digested and the chorionic villi actually get dipped in the blood. If one more layer is lost, that is 3 is also lost, we have hemoendothelial. So, these are the different types of placenta on the basis of layers between them. Uh, so, we have seen two classifications, one on the basis of which extra embryonic membrane helps in formation and second is what is or which all layers separate the fetal blood from the maternal blood. Let us also see uh, uh, some more uh, classifications of placenta and then we will come to the functions. The next classification is based on the intimacy between the maternal placenta and the fetal placenta. So, this is our third classification.
on the basis of intimacy or closeness. There are three types according to this deciduate, non deciduate, and contra deciduate. We have seen that the placenta has two parts. Let us just represent it like this. This is the maternal placenta and say this is the fetal part. So, this is fetal placenta. This is the endometrial lining. After parturition, parturition is when the fully formed fetus is expelled from the mother's body which we in normal term call delivery after that even placenta comes out. In case of deciduate type of placenta the maternal placenta and fetal placenta both are thrown out of the mother's body. That means even mother's placenta, mother's contribution of the placental part that also goes out along with the fetal placenta. This is, this is seen in case of human beings. Non deciduate, again let us use the same, this is fetal placental part and this is maternal placental part. In non deciduate, the placenta after parturition it breaks from here. So, fetal part goes out with the embryo with the uh, newly born and the maternal part remains with the mother's tissue. So, maternal part with the mother, fetal part goes out with the fetus. In case of deciduate, even mother's part also goes out along with the fetal part of the placenta. This is seen in other mammals excluding uh, humans, primates, dogs, other mammals show this. Contra deciduate, contra deciduate is just reverse of deciduate. This is fetal placenta and this is maternal. In case of deciduate what had happened was even mother's part of the placenta is thrown out of the body or we can say the mother's placental part also goes out along with the fetal part. In contra mother's part uh, sorry in non deciduate mother's part remains with the mother fetal part goes with the fetus. In this case the placenta breaks from here. So, mother's part remains with the mother's body and even the fetal part remains with the mother's body. So, in this case mother's part goes out with the fetal placenta. In the second category mother's part remains with mother, fetal part goes with fetus. In case of contra even fetal part remains with the mother. So, this is seen in case of uh, examples are bandicoots. And these are all other mammals excluding humans that is uh, primates, apes, monkeys, uh, human beings. Uh, other mammals show this bandicoots uh, the lower uh, type of uh, mammals they show this kind of placentation. So, this is on the basis of the closeness between the maternal and the fetal placenta how close they are. Here they are close but in this case the maternal part also goes out in the contra fetal part also remains in the mother's body and here what is belonging to mother stays with mother what belongs to the fetus goes out with the fetus. This is one way of classification. The fourth way or basis of classification is on the basis of the location of the placenta, location and shape. In some cases if this is the embryo the placenta is in the form of a band like this then it is known as zonary it is in the form of complete zone. So, this is zonary a zone complete band of a placenta. 
in some animals the placenta is in the form of patches it is known as corti nari corti lid nari it is in the form of small patches all over everywhere in some organisms the placenta is in the form of two discs this is seen in case of human beings it is called metadiscoidal and in some organisms there is only one disc placenta is in the form of one disc so it is known as discoidal so this is on the basis of where and how the placenta are arranged so this is one classification now let us take the functions of placenta number 1 it is a structure which attaches the embryo or fetus to the maternal body or maternal tissue and through it exchange of substances takes place what are those substances which get exchanged between the mother's body and the fetus normally nutrients nutrients go from the maternal tissue to the fetus so this is nutrients oxygen these are from mother to fetus certain things which are coming from the fetal body or into the maternal tissue that is waste and carbon dioxide so it moves from fetus to the maternal tissue so placenta is helping in exchange of substances nutrients also respiratory gases also and waste material also placenta secretes some hormones one very important hormone is progesterone which is called the pregnancy hormone so as long as the female is pregnant this placenta will go on secreting progesterone because high level of progesterone is required to maintain pregnancy the thick lining of endometrium so one hormone which is secreted is progesterone very small quantity of estrogen is also secreted one more hormone which is produced or secreted by placenta is known as hcg it is called human sorry human chorionic gonadotropin hcg it gets secreted in urine so all those uh, kits which are available to detect pregnancy whether a female is pregnant or not the simple technique is there is a strip of a paper and if few drops of urine are put on that strip and its color changes that confirms the presence of hcg the color change is because of the reaction of hcg which is excreted out in urine so if the color changes that confirms the presence of hcg in urine and why would hcg come in the urine because placenta has been formed and why is placenta formed because fertilization took place and zygote got implanted that means pregnancy is confirmed so those kits which are used to detect pregnancy are actually using uh, detection of hcg one more hormone which is secreted by placenta is known as placental lactogenic hormone placental lactogenic hormone it stimulates formation and enlargement of lactiferous glands that is mammary glands so these are the hormones main hormones which are produced by uh, placenta towards the end towards the end that is during parturition 
it also releases some quantity of relaxin. Here we need to write down during parturition. Relaxin is not produced all the time. Relaxin is produced by corpus luteum and progesterone. But at the time of parturition when the baby is to be expelled from the mother's body. Another important function of placenta, it acts as a barrier. Placenta acts as a barrier for most of the chemicals and germs. Most of the germs, bacteria, viruses, they cannot cross the placenta. So even if the pregnant female suffers from some diseases, that does not affect the fetus. So most of the things cannot cross. But there are certain substances, chemicals, which can cross the placental barrier and affect or damage the fetus. Such substances are known as teratogens. Teratogens are substances which can cross, they can cross placenta and damage the fetus. Certain viruses like German measles virus, HIV, chemicals like nicotine, they can cross the placenta and if female, that pregnant female is affected by German measles, then the chances are that the baby will also get affected. Same is the case with HIV, same is the case with certain chemicals. With HIV, we have to remember that scientists have found out a drug or a chemical which can block the passage of HIV through placenta. But for that, the female should be aware or the doctor should be aware that this lady or this pregnant female is HIV positive. By using those chemicals, transfer of HIV from the female is prevented into the fetus. So, HIV positive female can give birth to a normal baby. In condition is if those drugs or chemicals are used. Nicotine uh, which is present in uh, cigarette uh, and all these things. So pregnant females are advised not to smoke because this nic nicotine is a carcinogenic substance. It can cross the placenta and go into the fetus and can cause damage to the fetus. One more important substance which is uh, not substance a molecule which is transferred or it crosses the placenta and goes into the fetus but that is a very very useful thing. It is immunoglobulin IgG. It is an antibody. When the babies are born, the first time when any human being after birth can synthesize his or her own antibodies in from the age of 4 months. That means from birth till the time you, your baby turns 4, it is not able to synthesize any antibodies. So how does it protect itself from all these uh, antigens and disease causing organisms? One is IgG antibody which has been transferred from the mother to the fetus through placenta. And then there is one more antibody which is IgA which is transferred through colostrum or milk. So this is how the mother provides immunity to the fetus. So IgG is the only antibody which can cross the placental barrier. So more, most important functions are that it helps in exchange of substances between the fetus and maternal tissue. It secretes important hormones. It acts as barriers for most of the pathogens and it helps in transfer of antibody that is IgG from the maternal tissue into the fetus which helps the fetus to 
uh, stay healthy till the age of four months when it starts to make its own antibodies. Teratogens, important term, these are substances which can cross the placental barrier and can cause damage to the fetus. Now after uh, the functions of placenta, we will talk of the extra embryonic membranes.